Welcome to another Q&A. This Q&A is about splitting the water from a pure water filter, whether it's RO or DI, for two hoses going to two poles cleaning a building at the same time. So the principle that we're going to sit as the foundation to this discussion is that water finds the path of least resistance. It's a metaphor for life as well, I can promise you. So when water finds a path, the path of least resistance, what does that mean? Well, that means if you have a single source and you split that source, so you have side A and side B, you could have three, four, five splits, but in this case, we'll just use two. So if you have side A and side B, if side A has identical hose and tube as side B, but side A is cleaning at four stories and side B is cleaning at three stories, then side B will have the path of least resistance. It'll be five PSI less gravity head. So side B, the three-story brush, if everything else is identical, will get more water, right? Now, alternatively, let's say side A and side B clean at four stories, but side A has 200 feet of hose and side B has 150 feet of hose. Okay, so which has the path of least resistance? Well, the resistance is uh, from, from hose and tube is from, it's called wall friction. That's the, the, the turbulence created by the, by the water running up through the middle of a tube and, and it's grabbing a, onto the walls. So you have 150 feet of wall resistance, um, wall friction versus 200 feet of wall friction. So again, in this case, everything else being identical and working at an identical height, side B will end up with more water than side A. Now, when I was a window cleaner, we used to um, do this. This is before I ever knew any of this. And so I would put a bowl valve in line with each of my operators, and I would stand there and balance them. One guy's going, I need more water. The other guy's going, I need more water. And so I'd have these little um, ball valves that I'd be twisting and trying to balance the two systems. But that means you've got a third operator, or you've got downtime as guys go backwards and forwards trying to work out how to balance the water. So... For the best part of just logical scientific design, running two poles off one system is not the best option. Now, there is a way to do it if you have way more water than anybody needs um, so that it doesn't matter. Like if you've got, let's say our flow rate, which we work with is half a gallon a minute, two liters a minute. If you've got five liters a minute um, or over you know, a gallon a minute, so you've got more than what you need for each pole, then in that situation, it doesn't matter. As long as the guy at three stories is getting his half gallon a minute and the guy at four stories is getting his half gallon a minute or more or less, um, neither of that particularly matter. well, less matters, more doesn't matter. But um, there's some complications to having a higher flow rate as well, but we've covered that in other videos. So, so the ideal system is to not split single source into two lines to each uh, operator, but rather to have independent lines per operator. So how do you do that? Well, there are a whole lot of other benefits of doing this also, by the way, is you take the water from the filter and you put it into a tank. That will maximize, in particular, if you have an RODI system, that will maximize the output of the RODI for the conditions that you have, which could be pressure, um, temperature, the membrane that you've got. There's loads and loads of things that can change the outputs of different different DIs from different manufacturers and different seasons, different conditions, you know, from, from geolocation. So, but, but it, in all situations with every RO system on the market, the maximum output of an RO system is when the maximum pressure differential across the membrane, so you've got you know, water going in, coming out as waste, you've got water going through and coming out as pure. And that's the pressure differential across that, which determines the performance of the reverse osmosis membrane, right? So the maximum, um, the ma if you've got back pressure coming on one side, then you're going to reduce the pressure differential across it. So you'll reduce the flow rate. So if you have no back pressure, in other words, all the water is going straight into a tank, then you're going to have the maximum pressure differential across your, your reverse osmosis membrane, and you're going to end up with the highest performance from the RO system that you've got, right? Now you get two 12 volt shore flow, eight amp, 1.8 gallons per minute, um, 100 PSI pumps, that's a standard flow jet, also makes something that's suitable. Uh, they don't need to be eight liters per minute, they could be 
five liters per minute, you know, 1.2 gallons per minute, flow jet make one like that. Um, as long as you've got, you know, probably double what you need at the brush, right? If you need half gallon a minute at the brush, then you want to have at least a gallon a minute from the pump that's being the delivery pump servicing the, um, the resistance of the hose and tube, servicing the head of gravity, which is five PSI per story. So the higher you go, you know, if you're cleaning at four stories, then you've got an additional 20 PSI of back pressure, um, which the pump can then work against. Yeah, so you have a dedicated pump per operator. It's 12 volt, so you, you, you can just, you know, charge your battery um, as you're driving, charge it with solar, trickle charge it when you get back to base, whatever it is, but you've always got the ability for each operator to have exactly what he needs um, in order to have the water that he wants. And then you could have a volume variable resistor flow control type function, whether it, maybe with a remote, um, you know, there's different ways, it depends how creative you are to make sure that the guys can adjust what they want. But as a rule, that pump is gonna do the job and give you the water that you want per operator. And then you're no longer thinking about the path of least resistance because there's only one path, okay? So that's why we don't promote, even though Flow Red Plus um, puts out under ideal conditions around four liters a minute or one gallon a minute. Um, we don't promote under under any conditions the, the idea of you know, making one system that runs two poles because whilst we can produce enough water to run two poles, the in-field experience is not efficient. So it's much better to go to, um, for Australia, maybe sylvan.com.au, like the agricultural supply guys uh, in America, tti.com or tractorsupply.com and look at the quad bike, the um, ATV bike uh, chemical spray systems. Some of those are like 60 PSI or 80 PSI, the right flow rate um, actually come with a tank, but if not, you can add a, a shore flow or a flow jet to it. But you basically want 25 gallons, 100 liters um, of buffer water um, so that the flow, the, the, the pure water system is gonna deliver the water into the buffer tank and the, the little delivery pumps are gonna draw the water from the, from the buffer tank and service the resistance um, through to the brush so that the guys have their half gallon a minute flow rate, which means that they will operate with the maximum efficiency, which ultimately means he's cleaning faster, which means he's gonna make more money, which means he's gonna clean more windows in, the, in each day and everything is gonna pay for itself over and over again. Okay, hope you enjoyed this one. That is why we don't recommend, even though we can, splitting a single water source into two delivery systems to two different brushes in the one system.